and just pray <laughs> hold elbows together and pray <laughs> oh I see listen I prophesy to you it will not come near you in the name of Jesus Okay, so lift your hands to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Just, just give me a little volume, please. Keyboardist, thank you. Just give me a little volume. To see you high and lifted up Shining in the light of your glory Pour out your power and love as we sing holy 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 we'll see you high and lifted up shining in the light of your glory pour out your power and love as we sing holy 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 and i want to see Holy Spirit, we pray that you will help us. Let the scroll be opened. Let our eyes see. In the name of Jesus, bless our hearts this morning. And we declare that Jesus will forever be lifted in this place. Amen and amen. God bless you. Please be seated. <laughs> Hallelujah. Please be seated. Mighty God. Let's get to the word. Micah chapter 4. Prophet Micah began to speak and prophesy about the, the character of the end time church. He began to reveal by the spirit the nature of the operation of the church. Micah chapter 4 and verse 1. And the prophet said, it shall come to pass in the last days. If we can have it, media help us so that we just hurry up. Micah chapter 4 and verse 1. That the mountain of the Lord's house, are we together? That it shall be established on the top of the mountains and it shall be exalted above the hills. That's a level of influence that is coming from the church. And the Bible says, verse Two, it says that all nations this says many nations do we have king james there shall come and say come let us go up to the mountain of the lord that means a time will come we will not look for them there will be a grace an investment of the spirit upon us and the bible says that they will say come let us go up to the mountain of the lord to the house of the God of Jacob. Please keep it there. It says, and he will teach us his ways. This is why they are coming to learn the ways of God. Please, I want you to understand that, you see, dominion in this kingdom is not an impartation. There is no grace for dominion. Dominion is the resultant effect of your comprehending the ways of God. Praise the Lord. So that your experience and that of another believer, even though the same Lord is rich unto all, the difference will be based on your depth of comprehending the ways of God. And this is also the biblical index to measure spiritual growth. In the Bible, we are taught that you are growing spiritually when two things happen to you. Number one, when you conform to the image and the character of the Christ in experience. This is the first biblical index to measure growth. Are we still together? I'm told there are overflows together. I bless you. I'm sure you are following. So the degree to which I confirm. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. There's a reason why I, I like to hear the sound. The, pro the prophet said, I will reveal my dark sayings upon the harp. Hallelujah. 
So the Bible says, are we still together? Yes. The degree, it says, my little children of whom I travail until Christ. He was talking to believers. The formation of Christ. Because you see, spiritual realities are twofold in their operation. There is the prophetic dimension of spiritual realities. Realities from the standpoint of the Christ. But there is the experiential manifestation of the same. So, realities can be established in the realm of the spirit, but never find expression within this domain. Are we together? The Bible says, forever, O Lord, thy word is settled, but it tells you the location. In heaven, it never said in the earth. It takes faith and the operation of the mysteries of the kingdom to make it settled on earth. And the first earth is you. That vessel of earth. Before your territory. Are we together now? Yes. I'm showing us the, the conferences like these are encounters with the light of God. It's a feast of light. The Bible says in John chapter 1 and verse 5 that the light shineth in darkness, it says. And the darkness comprehended it not. It is very important. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 18. Paul was mentoring the church in Ephesus. And he said, having their understanding darkened. He says, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them. That means in spite of all that Christ has done. Our ignorance, our barrenness when we are bankrupt spiritually. When we do not sustain the requisite level of spiritual understanding. The Bible tells us that we can be alienated from the potential of the life of God are we together this morning so he will teach us his ways in John chapter 14 when you read verse 6 Jesus is teaching and he said I am the way there is Jesus the way the methodology of the kingdom he opens you up to the secrets and the system of God this is very, very important. God is also a God of patterns. I'm taking my time to build so that you will understand. Exodus chapter 25 and verse 40. When Moses was building the tabernacle in the wilderness, the Bible says in chapter 25 and verse 40 that God continued to come down to insist that you make them according to the pattern. Somebody say pattern. There are spiritual patterns. Things do not just happen haphazardly. There is a pattern for healing. There is a pattern for growth. Are we together? There is a pattern for speed. There is a pattern for influence. And that if you want to host my glory, you must ensure that the house is built according to pattern. Go to Exodus chapter 40. And then from verse 33, it's amazing that the Shekinah of God never rested upon that building until they finished the work according to pattern. And then 34 now says, um, please give it to us. Then the cloud covered the tabernacle of meeting and the glory of God filled that tabernacle. Consuming fire. Sweet perfume, your awesome presence feels it consuming fire. Sweet perfume, your awesome presence feels. Listen, believers, hear me. Every time the glory of God shows up, it comes to confirm that his patterns have been followed. The glory of God never shows up until his patterns have been kept. The glory of God is an attestation upon a life, an organization, a ministry that the patterns of the spirit have been kept. So when your life reflects the beauty and the glory of God, it is a report card speaking to the world that you have walked in keeping with God's patterns. Are we together? The glory of God 
confirms that his patterns if the glory of God comes upon your finances it is an attestation that you have kept the patterns of the spirit the economic system of the kingdom have been kept if the glory of God comes upon your ministry comes upon your family when your family reflects Psalm 112 it is proof that you have kept certain principles the Bible says in Psalm 112 it says blessed is the man that feared the Lord that delighted greatly in his commands the Bible then says his seed shall be mighty upon earth it says the generation of the upright shall be blessed it says wealth and riches shall be in his house and yet his righteousness endures forever when your life becomes that living epistle it is proof that you have kept the pattern so we are here like spiritual archaeologists to explore the patterns of the spirit shifting is not just a confession transiting from one dimension it is true the bible says the path of the just provided you are just it says the character of your life should be such that you transit from one dimension of glory even to another in the similitude of the rising of the sun unto the perfect day however scripture now says they know not psalms 82 and verse 5 it was a lamentation in the spirit that they know not neither will they understand it says they walk on in darkness and verse 5 says all the foundations of the earth are out of course then verse 6 says i have said ye are gods and all of you are children of the most high but the tragedy is in the next verse it says but you shall die like mere men and fall like one of these princes it takes spiritual illumination light light of the world you step down to my darkness open my eyes let me see that's the miracle in that song will you open my eyes let me see believers sing it one more time will you open my eyes let me see listen to me listen the bible is filled with limitless possibilities that were demonstrated by the saints and the kingdom life itself is a compendium of infinite possibilities please follow me that our work of faith is only limited by the ability of the one who is called Abba the source the sustainer the defender are we together now that the kingdom life please understand this the kingdom life is a compendium of infinite possibilities however that those possibilities are guided and coordinated by an exact body of knowledge there is an exact body of knowledge that is responsible for the various outcomes that we desire. And this conference seeks to bring us to a point of quintessence where we stop shadow boxing. We do not just randomly apply spiritual principles in hope that one of them will work. The Bible says, he that strives for mastery is not crowned except he strives lawfully. So it's a conference that brings us to come up here that we will see better that you know exactly what is responsible for increase you know what is exactly responsible for restoration listen every dimension you require is in christ every dimension your destiny needs is available but do you have the requisite level of spiritual understanding that is tied to that result you know pastor most believers what happens in the body of christ i am not i do not think the body of christ is in ignorance no i do not agree god has helped us in this age and in this time but the challenge is that there is no sequential arrangement of spiritual truth so we do not really know what truth is responsible for what spiritual outcome we engage truth randomly the blood of jesus the fire of the holy ghost prophecy offering seed sacrifice and the danger is that one of them will walk 
But because there is no exactitude to our spiritual understanding, we can no longer reproduce the results. Is God speaking to us? And so we must come to a point where we are not just excited about spiritual knowledge. We are excited about exact spiritual knowledge. I should be able to know that when I'm learning a revelation, I must see its applicability in my spiritual life. Not every spiritual knowledge is important as far as the victory and the dominion of the saints are concerned. Just because it is spiritual does not mean it is useful. So Jesus says, I have many things to tell you. He says, but ye cannot bear them. He says, how be it? When he, the spirit of truth, is come, he says he will guide you. Just because it is truth does not mean it will bless you. You must be guided. Divination uses truth. Mm -hmm. Witchcraft uses truth. So you must be guided. There is an exact body of knowledge. You see, it is frustrating to know what can be. And yet your life never captures that experience. I know God can restore, but why will it not happen in my life? I know God can give speed. I cannot doubt it. The Bible is an attestation of that possibility. People recovered lost things. An archive of these exploits was captured in Hebrews 11. It says, time will fail me to talk of Gideon, Jephthah, Barak, men who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, shut the mouth of lions. Are we together now? Yes. So that we know what is responsible for what outcome. My God, that after service, someone can know that in the next one month, I will take the 10 years I have lost and put it in that one month by a spiritual understanding. Yes, time can be restored in God's economy. He says, I will restore the years, not just the things. If all you lose is things you did not lose, but when you lose time, you really lost. So when God begins to restore his focus, because real dominion is dominion over time. Whatever steals your time, stole your destiny. Is God blessing us already? So we thrive on the strength of our depth of spiritual understanding. Jesus shows up and he begins to mentor a group of people, first the twelve. Then the 70, then as many who were interested in attending his conferences, he started with what we know theologically to be the Beatitudes. He was teaching them another system of government that was similar, but um, also passing in excellence. Are we together? And when he gets to chapter 13 of Matthew, then verse 11, please give it to us. Jesus was teaching them. And they were confused as to the parables that he was given. He had to downgrade spiritual realities to use um, a system that the people were, were used to. And then he makes a statement that I want us to read together if you can see. Ready? Please read. It says, he answered and said unto them, uh -huh, Because it has been given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. Please stop. He captures this body of knowledge that is allocated for the victory of the saints and he calls it the mysteries of the kingdom. There is an exact body of truth that is privy to those who are in the kingdom. Are we together now? This is very powerful. That means that our exploits is predicated upon our spiritual understanding, our access to this body of knowledge that the Bible calls mysteries. Everybody say mysteries. A mystery is a hidden body of knowledge. It's a formula, but it is hidden from the eyes and the knowledge of all. It is privy to a group of people. For instance, there are codes of communication that will only be understood by those in the military. Am I correct? They have communications, they have body languages that suggest certain things. But you will have to be in the military when you are absorbed into that system. Then they open up to you so that they can be communicating and a layman who is not a military man may not understand they are called mysteries a husband and a wife can have codes of communication as far as the family context is concerned 
Pastor can, for instance, tell his wife, get the visitor a drink, and yet the visitor never hears anything. By reason of intimacy, they have established certain codes. Are we together now? In the kingdom, there are mysteries. For instance, there is he that scattered and yet increased. It's a mystery that only the sons in light can understand. It says there is he that withholdeth more than his meat and tends to poverty. For instance, why will a man dance his way out of shame and reproach? Dancing does not make sense to be a weapon of victory. But it is a mystery in the kingdom. Praise. Why should I sing and dance in the midst of situations and circumstances that are unfavorable? Because the Bible says you will reap in joy, not with joy, in joy. So if you are not joyful, the possibility of the harvest is not even there. These are mysteries. Listen. When things were missing in the Bible, there was a mystery that they engaged. It was the ministry of the prophetic. Alas, master, it was borrowed. He said, don't worry. There is a provision in God's economy where things that are lost can return. And I'm saying it prophetically to someone. Listen, do you know that whatever lives your life is still on earth? That means there is a technology that calls it back. And the bones were very dry. He says, son of man. Listen, just because you could not see the bones did not mean they were not there. They were there waiting for a dimension of spiritual reality to call them back. That means relationships can be called back. Finances, money can be called back. Your passion, your fire for God, the things of the spirit can be called back. Please believe, find a way of believing what I am telling you. It is true. Are we blessed? You are not growing. If your understanding is unfruitful as far as the exact listen when it has to do with our knowing God and pressing into the deep things of God it is infinite we will never exhaust it even in heaven there is room to come up hither we will continue to learn God as a book that never ends are we together now however as far as the victory of the saints is concerned there is an exact body of knowledge that is finite. The knowledge that makes for the victory of the saints on earth is not infinite. It is finite. Like the curriculum of a university, you can hold it. And know that with all humility, I have exhausted the length and the breadth as far as the victory of the saints is concerned. The understanding that the principles that make for victory is infinite already frustrates you from the start of the journey. You are supposed to be so blessed that you no longer try to look for things and you focus on him. He now becomes your project. He now becomes what the continuity of your spiritual pursuit is no longer to get things but to seek him. If you spend your life trying to conjure these principles to walk, you live the wasted life, respectfully speaking. It's not to insult you, but to communicate truth. We were not designed to spend our lives hoping that principles work. Your lifetime is too short to be trying and guessing. Remember, we're talking time here. There is a level of accuracy that I must step into. Sort my finances, sort family, sort my health. Be like Abraham that he was old and well stricken in age. And the Lord had blessed him in all things. So that now when I go to pray, I do not have any prayer point except to seek his majesty to know him more to serve him more to see to it that his purposes are birthed but that cannot be possible until the things that make for life and godliness are sorted out so he granted us the mysteries of the kingdom that these keys will bring us to a point where we can exercise the dominion of heaven in reality here and now are we blessed this morning this is what you get in church you don't get this in a bank. No, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go. Why? Because the church of God is the house of God. There is a gate, there is a portal that opens men from that region to the throne of God. When they come, they receive a supply of applicable spiritual knowledge that you are equipped like giving a warrior a sword. You can walk out of this place and say, happy sunday and know you will return next sunday with a testimony yeah. you are not hoping 
You are not guessing. I know whom I have believed and I am persuaded. Dr. Luke began to teach Theophilus in chapter 1 of Luke. He talked about the things that are most surely believed. There are things that you should not be doubting and hoping if they work or not. You should have come to a point of persuasion, unbendable persuasion. Someone pray whilst you are seated. Lord, open my eyes. Strengthen my conviction. Someone is praying in this conference. Open my eyes. I'm tired of guessing and hoping I'm getting it right. There is a way. Someone is praying. hallelujah praise the lord i don't have all the time but i'm going to just be sharing with us maybe one for this service and then another for the next what i call the mysteries of the kingdom did i give my message a title <laughs> call it the mysteries of the kingdom let's call this part one We reign in this kingdom on the strength of the truths and the mysteries that we know. We do not reign by intention. It takes more than intention to reign. It takes more than desire. It takes more than a well-meaning heart. Please listen to me, dear people of God. When we sustain the intelligence of the spirit, you will rise like Satan does not exist. It is true. Hallelujah. Our ignorance will continue to magnify Satan to the degree to which our ignorance remain. That is the degree to which he remains magnified. Knowledge deflates him. Deflates him to a point where he no longer becomes a point and a source of concern because you have been so elevated by the strength of knowledge. He says, I went up by revelation. I didn't go up by desire. I went up by revelation hallelujah are we ready for the mysteries of the kingdom number one the first mystery of the kingdom that i will share with us that is responsible for the strange rising and the lifting of men that can transit any man any organization and any body of people from one dimension to the other is called the mystery of prayer the mystery of prayer Luke chapter 18 and verse 1. Jesus is teaching now. And how many of you know that when Jesus is teaching, you listen to him? Jesus is teaching on prayer. And this is what he says. The Bible says he spake a parable to the end that men ought always to pray. So the only person exempted from prayer is the one who is not a man. This is the first information. Prayer is not for prayer warriors. Prayer is not for preachers. Prayer is not even for desperate people. Prayer is for men. He spake a parable to the end. The morale is that men ought always to pray and not to faint. Are we together now? So he's teaching on prayer. Let's listen to Jesus' thoughts on prayer. Um, I have to rush because of time. Jesus is giving a scenario. He starts by saying there was this judge. Wow. Sin one already is a law court. Are we together now? And then he describes a judge. I pray you never find such in your life. That there's this man who did not fear God. That means the Holy Spirit cannot talk to him and he obeys. And then he did not also regard men. You could not talk to him. What sort of a man is that? Did not fear God. Did not regard men. This was a judge. Your destiny depends on such a man. No fear of God. No regard for men. Sin 2. Very interesting. Verse 3. The Bible now says there was a widow. Look at the contrast. A widow is a woman that is supposedly defenseless. Are we together now? He's showing you the excellency of prayer. So he starts with a cruel man that seems to have no fortitude for forgiveness or mercy or repentance. Then he now shows a woman who is supposedly helpless. 
and he said get justice for my adversary and for a while the bible says next verse that this man would not pay attention to her but then he said within himself though i do not fear god nor regard man verse 5 it says yet because this widow troubles me that means there is an effect to prayer that when men pray it's not only their sound they hear there is a sound in the realm of the spirit that moves beyond that horizon the region of prayer and begins to correct things that prayer is a system of negotiation it's a system of kingdom legislature you can be at a point and your prayer immortalizes your presence goes to a region where you cannot go and begins to correct things this is a judge that does not fear God this is a judge that has no regard for men yet a widow uses this mystery of prayer is God speaking to someone and then he says less by her continual coming the key is consistency that means when I am weak prayer can make me strong you may think london will not open up for me you are right until i pray you may think i may not get a job you are right until i pray you think my children will become what other people have you are right until i pray your prophecy about me is correct until I pray. It's true that I should fail. It's true that my papers don't seem to be coming until I pray. Jesus is teaching that the saints are not powerless when you understand the jurisdiction of the spiritual realities that prayer can capture. It's not just an instrument to respond during emergency. No! Prayer can move things. Believe me. You can grow your way through prayer. You can transit to a newer version of you through prayer. Luke chapter 9. Please give it to us. We have to hurry up. My spirit is fired up. Luke chapter 9 and verse 29. Luke chapter 9. The Bible says as he prayed, two things happened. That must happen to someone after this conference number one is the appearance of his face was altered that means prayer can transform you to a weak from a weak you to a strong you prayer can transform you from a timid lady a timid man the first thing that happened when Jesus prayed was that his countenance I can become a newer version of me if I can pray rejoice not over my yesterday prayer can change me yes i know that i was once saul the son of kish barren of spiritual intelligence not even knowing where the donkey is but as i pray i will find a samuel and i will return back to be one of the sons of the prophet men can grow men can transit they can rise to superior versions of themselves all you see is not all that can be there truly can be more. Apostle, nobody wants to help me in London. I don't know why. I don't have anybody. You are right until you pray. Apostle, I am bound hand and chain and it looks like my life cannot move forward. Ask the early church. They prayed. They prayed angels to the earth. They prayed chains to fall. we are here for you come and do what you do we are here for you come and do what you do Please sit down. Please sit down. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 6 tells us that prayerlessness creates anxiety. You know what anxiety is? Anxiety is the natural reaction of man to uncertainty. It is human to be uncertain. There are no guarantees anywhere because men can change. Prayer becomes the stabilizer to a man's life. It says be anxious for nothing. 
be anxious for nothing but in that means there is no issue that prayer cannot listen prayer is not the only key but where prayer is not the key is the hand that holds the key in any case you will need prayer in everything by the mystery of prayer and supplication with thanksgiving don't assume he knows your request make your request known make your housing issue known make the issue of your child known make the issue of your health known make the issue of coronavirus known make the issue of your finances known this is the god of heaven i refuse to be anxious i refuse to be perturbed by life i may look weak but there is a government whose jealousy has been invested upon my life and listen let me tell you this prayer is the highest demonstration of humility it is proof that you acknowledge that by yourself and in your strength you do not sustain that ability so you tap into the intelligence of a government that is ancient very ancient with a track record of winning listen to me an attack on your prayer life is a real attack greater than the attack on your finances when your prayer life dies it's only a matter of time every other thing around your life begins to reflect prayerlessness someone in this conference you need to trust god for grace to obtain by the spirit the the grace for prayer and supplication turn the plates down in your house shut your door and say i'm not only a wife i'm a priest i'm not only a businessman you take on your priestly regalia and shut the door and begin to control the spiritual climate over your territory Sit down. Ali Sali Haprandos Kadiatos. Men who can pray do not take no for an answer. Be careful when you tell them no, you will soon say sorry. Hezekiah was a man appointed to death in chapter 38 of Ezekiel of Isaiah, and a true prophet, Isaiah, brought him a report from God. You will not recover. And he said, thank you, prophet. I honor your office. Let me talk to God. And he turned to God and said, did you not create a system of negotiation? Remember, if I die, who replaces me in serving your purposes? And God said, no. Listen, you can negotiate new realms in your life. You can... Re <sighs> if you have not prayed... Don't trust the result you see. Let me repeat myself. If you have not prayed, do not trust the result you see. Next week I will give you a property. Don't trust that result until you have secured it in prayer. The vacillations of men. Are we together now? The inconsistencies of men. Will, you will have a plethora of heartaches until you learn the excellency of prayer. I don't trust anything until it is secured in prayer. But if and when it is secured, let it change in the physical, I do not care. Because prayer is such a jealous holder. When it holds things, it keeps them. Everybody say prayer. prayer. I believe in prayer. Why do we pray in the kingdom? 1 Corinthians 16 and verse 9. Hashi la branda super hasikata biasha. Elabrandi skiata. 1 Corinthians 16. Give us verse 9. Someone please read. For a great and effective door has opened to me, and there are many. Listen. You don't need to find out where Satan is. Just look for where open doors are. Everywhere there is an open door, there is contention. Everywhere there is prophecy, there is contention. Everywhere the attention of God is, that's where Satan is. You don't need to look for where he is. He is wherever the word of God is going. Because he wants whatever God says. So if God has spoken through your man of God over your life, that this is a season of shift i can tell you when jesus was done fasting the first person he met was satan i hope you know that 
There is a fast that brings him close to you. Yeah. <laughs> Are we Bible students? Because the unusual angelic activities that happen around your life will cause hell to say, they remember Satan was once an archangel. Angels don't come to the earth for nothing. When he sees an unusual, what is wrong with this family? There has been an unusual activity of angels. Let's find out what God is saying. Because the angels excel, they confirm his word. So every time angels are released, Satan is not exactly omniscient. He does not know all things, but he can use the operation of heaven to know what God is doing. One of it is angelic activities because they signify the word of God. Revelations 1 verse 1. The revelation of Jesus, which he gave to his servant John, he sent it and signified it by his angel. Could that be why when prophecies come, contentions come too? Because when you are lifted, the name of the Lord is also lifted. Your children are also lifted. The testimony of God's grace spreads abroad all over London. And so Satan will come because he knows that in your discouragement is the discouragement of many. So instead of looking for everybody, he finds you and makes uses your life like a painter trying to draw and says that God is not faithful. Satan is not looking for everybody. He's looking for those that have prophecy upon their lives because the impact of the failure of the word in their life will do him much good. Hallelujah. One more scripture and then we pray. James 5, 16. The Bible first starts from verse 13. It says, is any man afflicted? When you are afflicted, he did not say run to neighbors who cannot help you and open up everything about your life and your family. No. Is anyone afflicted? He says, let him pray. Even if you do not know what to do, start praying. It is in the prayer that direction comes. As they prayed, the Holy Ghost spoke and said, separate me Paul and Barnabas. Help that man. The anointing of the Spirit is upon him. You are stepping into a new dimension. Please help me with the Simba. I'm seeing a dove just come into this building. And I'm seeing 11 people. Please bring them out. Right now as I'm speaking. Right now the power of God is coming on them. Bring them out. Right now 11 people. A new dimension. Fire for prayer. Right to the back. And the overflows. It's time for the fountains to be opened. You call it a shift. Bring them by the power of the Holy Ghost. Fill me up, God. Fill me up, fill me, bring them out, fill me up, God, hallelujah, now listen, 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 the Lord is telling me, um, I want to release, um, um, oh God, God is messing my sermon already, I'm about to release a grace for speed, listen, please hear me, and as I pray this grace, the power of God will come upon you. It doesn't matter where you are. And people will start running physically. I want you to hold them so they don't injure themselves. Father, I decree right now, all over this place, I bring an anointing. Move to a new dimension. Speed. Bring them out. Speed. 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 Step into a new level. Step into a new dimension. I bring you the ministry of the Holy Ghost. I bring you the ministry of the Holy Ghost. Fill me up. 
till I overflow. It's a new season. Liberty Church. We are not teaching cunningly devised fables. These are realities in the spirit that men can transit to dimensions. Hallelujah. We are wrapping up. This is what you get in church. Hallelujah. David. I'm hearing the name David. Who is David? David. David. You are a photographer. David. Who is that? Feel me. God. Feel me. You are stepping into a new level. Receive that anointing now. New dimension in the spirit. listen listen in all honesty let me advise you there is no point living after this service because there is still one more truth that i want to share with you is you came for a conference don't waste your time and waste your life so that you can receive something that will shift you there are certain days in the lives of men hallelujah hallelujah i'm hearing a name it's a yoruba name dupe who is dupe who is that you are dupe come your life is about to change what do you do you work in this church you're a staff in this church is that true this is what i'm saying i want to pray for you because i'm seeing you climb a ladder in the realm of the spirit and god himself is bringing you to a new season in the name of jesus i declare step into a new dimension by the spirit and the power of god hallelujah your mom is sick your mom is on the sick bed this is what the lord is revealing to me who is that i'm seeing i'm seeing uh, someone's mother um who is that an angel of the lord is bringing me to this row he's saying the person is here is there someone like that help her the power of god is on her someone's mom here who is that please where is she so that we make sure that please huh? your mom where is she nigeria you believe that jesus can heal her never forget it here at liberty church jesus still heals here at liberty church jesus still lives in the name of jesus i pray for your mom by the power of the holy ghost let there be healing right now in the name of jesus christ I need to pray for you not just your mom you come we have to wrap up this service what's your name who is Emmanuel I'm Emmanuel what's your name Emmanuel please help us with the mic just just a little volume thank you Emmanuel is the name what do you do sir what do you have to do with money I'm seeing I'm seeing a machine that counts money, just spinning. I'm an accountant. Where? Bank I work for Wells Fargo. It's true? He's an accountant. Sir, I'd like you to prepare. A lifting is coming for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. A lifting is coming for you. You're also Emmanuel. What do you do? You're a product designer and... It is not only a product designer, there is a call of God upon your life. My friend, God is going to use you mightily. There is a strong teaching grace and a strong prophetic grace. It will not come now, but it will come. And God will use you mightily. In the name of Jesus, I pray for you. Step into a new level and a new dimension in the spirit. In the name of Jesus. Now, please, um, we have to, my God. Where did I stop? I was teaching, oh. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Bring a lady that shouts now under the anointing to the hearing of everybody. The power of God is coming on someone now. A loud shout. Bring her. Mighty God. The power of God is coming on someone. You are in real estate. But things have been tight. But I'm seeing an anointing coming on you now. 
it will not be more than two weeks before God begins to shift you. Bring that person now. Believe me. Listen. You see, before you believe a man, find out about him. I know that here and there the prophetic has been abused. I know that people have done a lot of nonsense. But listen, not everyone has bowed to Baal. There are people who have paid the price in the spirit and have a testimony from God. This woman is in real estate. In the name of Jesus, I prophesy to you in the open, in the presence of everybody. Shift to a new dimension of possibilities. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. Dio. Dio. What do you do, sir? I want to pray for you. A big contract is coming for you. Make sure it does not distract you. In the name of Jesus, step into it. By the power of the Holy Ghost. By the power of the Holy Ghost. What do you do, sir? In the name of Jesus, I avert evil from your life. The Bible says the rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the lot of the righteous, lest they dip their hands in iniquity. I pray for you. You are exempted from evil. In the name of Jesus, now! I set you free because what I see in the realm of the spirit would affect you seriously but I bring you the ministry of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus Christ by the power of God blessed be the name of Jesus blessed be the name of Jesus okay praise the name of the Lord before we wrap up this service right where you are Whatever you are trusting God for, you are tired of that level. I'm releasing my faith with you. Lift your voice now in one minute and ask. Lift your voice. Lift your voice. Someone who is a believer, lift your voice. You will be surprised. Believe me. I'm releasing my faith with you. I release my faith with you. Lift your voice and ask. You will marvel and wonder at the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Lift your voice in one minute. Ask. I bring to you my secret place. I back you up in prayer by the power of covenant in the name of Jesus Christ. I back you up by the power of covenant. New dimensions in the name of Jesus. hallelujah hallelujah please listen i'm going to be sharing with you a very deep mystery in the next service this mystery is responsible for the strange acceleration of many please all through the remaining sessions of this conference i'm told tomorrow is a miracle service and i'm going to be prophesying and speaking over your life listen I want you to invite your loved ones wherever they are, provided they are within this region. This is not just an issue of the Liberty Church. This is God visiting a territory. Are we together now? And we are going to be praying and speaking. We are going to be speaking to close doors and gates. Ephata, opening them hither and theta. That's what is happening to that madam on green. I'm seeing a door open towards you. I open that door now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I stand in agreement with the angel over this commission. And in the name of Jesus, we declare that this is a new season for God's people. Young lady, look at me. This one, lift your hands. Shout Jesus as loud as you can. In the name of Jesus, there is an anointing coming on you. You will never be the same. We decree and declare for everyone who is present here, the overflow everywhere, be blessed in the name of Jesus. I bless you with hunger for spiritual things. In the name of Jesus, fresh fire upon your prayer altar. That as you begin fresh fire upon your prayer altar fresh fire upon your prayer altar fresh fire upon your prayer altar 
the grace to pray the grace to travel i take away the weakness of the flesh i place upon you an anointing the grace to pray the grace to fast the grace to pray the grace to fast in the name of jesus christ thank you jesus let the name of the lord be praised in the mighty name of jesus christ god bless you celebrate you you will deliver you will bless let it be profitable oh god that we came to your presence let no one leave untouched let no one leave the same let the liberty church step into new dimensions in the spirit in the name of jesus whilst you're standing in one minute just cry to the lord ask him for a visitation lift your voice and pray someone is praying all of the overflows pray unto you that answer prayer shall all flesh come someone praying is revealing his love is revealing his grace hallelujah this conference among many things is proof of how far god intends to reach to make sure your life becomes a reflection of his glory i believe in the power of the holy spirit i believe in what he can do in the name of jesus i believe it we're going to sit down shortly but the power of god is coming on two people now as i'm speaking i just saw like an open heavens just give me a little volume you see many times when the spirit of god begins to move to touch people like this it is because he he is moving to honor the name of jesus this is why he does the things that he does are we together now two people Two people. Majesty, Majesty, Jesus, Kali Your grace has found me just as I am. Empty hand but a life in your hand Sing majesty yeah. Majesty Majesty Forever I am changed by your love there is such listen take it higher there is such i don't know what is happening in this service but there is such a strong anointing of the holy spirit it says and the hand of the lord came upon elijah and he ran and overtook the chariots of ahab down to israel listen hear me people of god you are immersed under a strong unction it doesn't matter where you are watching from it doesn't matter which of the overflows we're going to sit down shortly but sometimes we need to allow the holy spirit to just have that convocation he's just walking through your life changing things from the front to the back the left to the right in the name of jesus the son of the living god all the overflows those watching from whatever nation the spirit of the living god the spirit of the living god taking us to higher dimensions hallelujah the bible says now the lord is that spirit he says and 
it says where the spirit of the lord is that means you can know where the spirit of the lord is why because there will be liberty this is called a liberty church so you know there is an attestation no shadow you won't light up mountain you won't climb up coming after me there's no wall you won't tear down lie you won't tear down coming Coming after me. There's no wall, there's no wall. No wall you won't shake down. Now you won't tear down. Coming after me. Hallelujah. 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 Please be seated if you can. And just be sensitive because while I teach the spirit of the living God. The spirit of the living God is going to be giving us visitations. You came for a conference. It is important that believers encounter the power and the glory and the grace of God. Because you call it a shift. And a shift does not just happen because you desire one. Ezekiel chapter 2 and verse 1. He asked me to stand and I did not have the strength. Verse 2 says, and the spirit entered into me. And set me upon my feet. This is what you get in church. This is what you get in the house of God. No wall you won't kick down. Lie you won't tear down. Coming after me. There's no shadow you won't light up. Mountain you won't climb up. Coming after me. That's how far you can reach for me. There's no wall you won't kick down. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. Oh, it chases me down, fights till I'm found. Come on, London, lift your voice. I couldn't earn it. I don't deserve it. Still you give yourself away. Oh, the overwhelming, never. Please be seated. Isaiah 60 and verse 1. Now listen, while I teach, I sense in my spirit that more than just enlightenment, there is a grace that is going to be lifting people. Listen, please, I want you to find a way of believing that this is true. God, by this word, you see, the word of God can be spoken and the word of God can be sent. When the word of God is sent, it is a messenger, like a tray. There is something it is carrying on it. It carries the possibilities of the Christ. Hallelujah. The Lord is telling me to speak to someone. He says, remember not the former things. Listen, as I'm talking to you, the power of God will come upon those people. The Lord is saying, I should tell you, you are coming to the end of that season. That season of shame. Help them, please. That season of reproach. Hear me, I'm speaking to you by the rod of a higher priesthood. That you are coming to the end of that season. You are coming to the end of that season. Hallelujah. Isaiah 60 verse 1. Jesus. I don't know how this service will turn now. The hunger of a man can touch the heart of God. 
when people are hungry and desperate there has to be a desperation in the heart of men you must desire God in a way and a manner that nothing else can take your place to feel the warmth of your embrace that's the kind of hunger that calls his presence help me find a way will you bring me That be your prayer, London. Hey. Sit down. Isaiah 60 and verse 1 says, Arise. It was not a suggestion. Arise, he says, shine, for your light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Amplified says, Arise from the depression and prostration that circumstances have kept you. Rise to a new light. Hallelujah. Arise. Because your light is come. The last service for those of you who were not around. Let me just do a quick recap. We were discussing that the glory of God. Please listen carefully. The glory of God is revealed as a confirmation that his patterns have been honored. God is a God of patterns. That means that when you walk with God. Please listen. When you walk with God, you are not at liberty to invent your strategy. The Bible says in Jeremiah chapter 6 and verse 16, that you stand in the way and you search for the ancient part. It says when you find it, walk therein and you will find rest for your soul. Creativity is not required when you are walking with God. It is when you are manifesting the power of God. Kingdom legislature. That is when you will need creativity. The assignment is follow me and I will make you. Follow me. There is a predefined methodology. Please look at me. The kingdom of God operates on exact systems. God is a God of systems. And God is a God of patterns. Cain and Abel are about to offer sacrifices and then Cain offers his own sacrifice and it does not touch the heart of God. And Abel offers his sacrifice and Cain is angry. And then God speaking, paraphrasing, said if you followed patterns, it would be received. That means there is a pattern that controls wealth and abundance. There is a pattern that controls speed. There is a pattern that controls intimacy with God. God does not. God loves everybody, but he will not reveal himself to everybody. No. His presence is priceless and there is a condition. He says, he that obeys my command, he it is that loves me. And I will love him and the father will love him. And we will come and manifest ourselves to him. John 14, 21. So you can be born again. You can be a child of God and never be able to host certain superior dimensions of his presence. Because not everything in this kingdom is a gift. There are things that are rewards. If everything were a gift, what then is the reward of obedience? Conditions. Deuteronomy chapter 1 says, It shall come to pass, if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord, to do and observe all that I command you this day, then, 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 you shall be exalted above all the nations of the earth, he says, and all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So this is very important for us to understand that as we desire to see the manifestation of the glory of God across different dimensions of our lives, we must hunger for the knowledge of his ways. 
and prophet Micah taught us that it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be exalted established above all other mountains and then he says that the nations will flow to it they will tell themselves come let us go to the house of the Lord to the God of Jacob he says and he will teach us his ways the secrets of God are hidden in his ways the Bible says in I think Habakkuk chapter 3 or so he says that God descends from Mount Teman and then he says that the light that proceeds from his hand amplified says in that light is the hiding place of his power the power of God has a location it hides in his light so wherever the light of God is made manifest his power also follows the power of God is where the word of God is. Hmm. Is God blessing someone already? And so it means that if you are growing spiritually, captured in your experience must be an introduction of new dimensions of God, dimensions of his ways. Just because an information is spiritual and true does not mean it will bless you. You have to understand this. Truth must be sequentially arranged. I give you an instance. There is something that if you do not know before you learn about prosperity, it will destroy you. So it's not enough to just have random truth. No, they must be sequentially arranged. This beautiful structure is sequentially arranged. Are we together now? There is a foundation. The superstructure is lifted. There, it is the sequence that brings value to the building. Just because you have all the raw materials there does not mean you have a building. A chef can have all the ingredients for a meal, but it does not mean he has the meal. The chef is a chef because of his uncanny mastery. The ability to combine the ingredients with precision to produce predictable outcomes. So the Lord is bringing us to this point so that he will take away shadow boxing and guessing from our lives. So that we are no longer in the dark. We can predict things. I can know I will rise. I can know I will live long. I can know that no arrow that flies by day or night can touch me. I'm not hoping. He says... For I know whom I have believed. Listen, let me tell you. It is not, um, realities in the kingdom should not only be believed. There is an experience. You can taste and see that the Lord is good. Not only know, you can taste. There is an experience to it. That your life becomes a living epistle. An effulgence of the possibilities of God. So that when you open the Bible, even when it is closed, it is still opened. You are now a continuation of what was written. So if I did not have my devotion in the morning, I don't feel bad when I see you. Now I can read scriptures through your life. You become a continuation of my devotion as I watch your life. Are we blessed? Jesus was teaching the disciples... He was introducing them to the kingdom. The kingdom talks about the governing influence of a king over a predefined territory. And remember in what we call the Lord's Prayer, when he was teaching, he said that we ask the Father to allow the kingdom to come. Thy kingdom come. How? By your will being done. So everywhere his will is being done, the kingdom comes. Are we blessed? But that in establishing his kingdom and rising from one level to the other, we will need to understand that we excel in this kingdom by light. Please say light. light. Spiritual illumination. This is very important. Paul was mentoring the church in Ephesus. And you must understand theologically speaking, it is believed that his epistle in Ephesus his ministry in Ephesus was the apex of his apostolic ministry because at that time Ephesus was a center of commerce just like London it was the financial hub of the then world are we together 
and they were they were a people who were very enlightened they were not naive they were not ignorant people and they were under the leadership of a goddess called diana and so he was teaching them on the things of the kingdom and then paul prays a prayer in chapter one beginning from verse 15 for this cause i bow my knees he says to the father of our lord jesus christ that he may grant unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation then he says your heart being enlightened amplified says flooded with light that you may know the word know there is not awareness it is the same word as being used a man knowing his wife fellowship with the mystery Dominion, therefore, is not an impartation. Dominion is the resultant effect of your comprehending the mysteries of the kingdom. In Matthew chapter 13 and verse 11, Jesus was teaching and he said, It has been given to you. It has been given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. These are the secrets of the kingdom by which we reign. Listen, the saints were designed to rise and to manifest the power, the life, the glory, the grace of God on the strength of a body of knowledge that the Bible calls mysteries. Are we together? Hosea chapter 4 and verse 6, the prophet was speaking by the Spirit and he began to lament and he said, My people, although they are my people, the Bible says they are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. He says, because you have rejected knowledge, you will no longer be priest unto me. You cannot represent me because you do not have the requisite level of spiritual understanding to defend my interest. Hallelujah. And so we need to be equipped. We need to be equipped with the requisite level of spiritual knowledge. And the Bible says, I commend you to God. Apostle Paul is speaking mentoring the church in acts of the apostles i commend you to god he says and to the word of his grace he says which is able to build you up number one number two to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified then he says and that from a child thou hast known the holy scripture he says which is able to make you wise unto salvation Ephesians 4, 18, having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them. You must fight ignorance like cancer. It destroys. It can keep you in the dark. Are we together? So we rise in this kingdom by light. It takes more than desire to rise. Please listen to me. It takes more than desire to capture the possibilities of the kingdom in your life. It will take more than a willing heart. It will take more than sincerity. The only dimension of growth that is natural is biological. Every other kind is engaged. Intellectual, engaged. Spiritual, engaged. Even a madman grows biologically speaking but if your intellect must grow you must engage it if your spirit man must grow you must engage it so we're gathered this afternoon within the time we have to share together this is a feast of light and it's important for you to understand that the things you are learning are not opinions it's dangerous to teach opinions because they are subject to an individual's experience they are subject to an individual's paradigm but the truths that we communicate have been vetted by god's integrity and backed by his own jealousy are we blessed amen so we began to explore the keys of the kingdom and i shared with us that the the kingdom of god is a compendium of limitless possibilities and that it is not enough to know the possibilities that are enshrined in this kingdom we must understand the spiritual systems that activate their operation are we together yes you can have an ipad it is true that you have a device that is capable of doing amazing things. Are we together? But having the requisite knowledge to operate it and maximize its use. 
Ephesians tells us that we have been blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places and that that is routed through the office of the Christ. This is my definition of grace. Every good and perfect gift that comes from above routed through the office of the Christ to the saints. But it's not enough that these provisions are there. We access them by light. Hallelujah. So the laws of the kingdom become our weapons for victory in this, in this domain of God's kingdom. You are vulnerable. You are limited. And sincerely speaking, you will fail. Fail in episodes until you have the requisite level of light. There are two reasons why Jesus cried in the Bible. The first reason why he cried was uh, when he stood before the grave of Lazarus. Remember? He wept, John eleven thirty five, 35. And they said, oh, how he loved him. The second reason why he cried was when he stood before Jerusalem. And the Bible says he wept and said, oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem. If you had known, even in this your day, the things that pertain to your peace, but now they are hid from your eyes. But the Lord wants our eyes to be open, to give us new vistas. Remember that when the Spirit is poured on high, we will see visions. Not just revelations, but access to the mysteries of the kingdom. The last service I taught on the first mystery, a mystery is a body of knowledge that is privy to a group of people. Are we together now? And I spoke about the mystery of prayer. Everybody please say prayer prayer is very powerful it sustains the ability to go beyond your present environment the only thing you can send to your future is your prayer it can go and wait for you your prayer can become your protocol it waits for you at the gates of your tomorrow it checks that tomorrow is ready for you and it if if it finds anything in your tomorrow that can sabotage the name of God in your life. It can deal with it while it waits for you with honor to come. Prayer is powerful. A weak man plus prayer is a warrior. A limited man plus prayer. Prayer makes anything. Um, good Bible study plus prayer will bring you the spirit of revelation business savvy plus prayer will bring you one whose wealth will remain a mystery to many prayer is an amplifier it does not reduce he spake a parable the bible says luke 18 and verse 1 to the end that men ought always to pray and not to faint an attack on your prayer life is a real attack you must guard your prayer life more than you guard jewelries you must guard your prayer life. You have a garage for your car. Well done, I commend you. You have a beautiful wardrobe for your clothes. Well done, I commend you. Show me where you protect your prayer life. Jealously. There must be space as proof of the value you place on it. Are we together? Amen and amen. Prayer is powerful. It makes weak people strong. Prayer transforms you like a snake molting. You can molt into a new version of you. That the fearful you can become the warrior you. That the weak you can become the strong you. That the, the, the limited you can be the unlimited you. And the bridge is prayer. Say in the name of Jesus. I obtain the grace to pray. Once you are a man, you are mandated by scripture to pray. Fathers, pray. Mothers, pray. Business people, pray. London, pray. The only thing that was attacked in Babylon was prayer. The prayer of Daniel frustrated the spirits, the territorial powers that operated around the second heavens and did not allow the council of darkness to prevail. And a whole parliament came together, respectfully speaking, to address one issue in a man's life. And they said, don't pray for 30 days. That's it. Imagine what happens in your life when you do not pray for 30 days. 
I did say in the last service that prayer is the highest proof of humility. It's proof that you acknowledge that outside of the help of God, you are nothing. And remember, the strength of God does not find strength. When it finds strength, it goes back. The strength of God looks for the acknowledgement of weakness. He told Apostle Paul that my strength is made perfect in your weakness. When the strength of God comes and finds strength, it goes back. It is not needed until it finds an acknowledgement. I need you, oh, I need you. Every hour I need you. Come bless me now, my Savior. Please let me have four or four or five gentlemen. I just want to illustrate something very quickly. Please come. Just stand facing me here. Thank you. Watch this. Yes, this way. Now watch this. All of these men, let them represent dimensions of spiritual possibilities. Let this man represent speed. Let this man represent prosperity. Let this man represent spiritual exploits. Are we together? Let this man represent favor. Did you know that... Help him. Watch this. Just, just leave him. He has received his own. Watch this. My, my prayer is that you will be so full of the spirit yes you will never be the same again sir never look look listen listen look the wonder of God's power in a moment a twinkling of an eye 10 years in one day that's it now watch this i was trying to illustrate something help him i told you to be, just be sensitive the power of god will continue to touch people do you know why listen 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 i'm praying that you will learn all these things are not just to show that men are powerful we are men i'm a man i get hungry i eat are we together now but the Lord demonstrates this to show us the possibilities in the kingdom. I was not born this way. No. No man is born into his superior version. You grow into that version. That means you are a preacher here. Is to show you the possibilities that can be. Is to provoke you. To plant a holy jealousy in you. To challenge you. Transformation is difficult until there is a reference. So God continues to set up people to model a pattern that provokes transformation. Are we blessed? Now back to my illustration, please. That means that when you read your Bible, ah, there is an anointing. Someone at that balcony, the power of God has come on somebody. Bring them here. I just saw by the Spirit carry them bring them here there is a mighty deliverance happening to that lady her and her entire family in the name of jesus i curse the workings of darkness this is what the Bible means when it says, Now the Lord is that spirit. It's not a sermon, it's an experience. It says, Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Nobody has the power to make this happen. Only God knows how many years this lady's family has been bound. Oh, but Jesus. But Jesus. Oh, God. You are my God And I will ever praise you Oh God 
You are my God, and I will ever serve you. Oh God, you are my God, and I will ever follow. I will seek you in the morning. And I have learned to walk in your ways. Yes, your prophecy now. Step by step, you are leading me. And I will follow you all of my days. Listen now. In the name of Jesus, let it be over forever. Let every closed gate be opened in the name of Jesus Christ. Now watch this. You can know that deliverance is true. You can know that healing is true. You can know that prosperity is true. But just knowing it does not mean it will be your experience. L listen, it is a frustrating thing for a believer to be aware of what can be in Christ and yet your life cannot capture that reality this is why many people usually will get frustrated and say look I'm tired of this thing there is an experience to the kingdom the things we have seen he says the things we have heard it is dangerous to continue to accumulate spiritual knowledge and not capture their reality in your experience the bible says of such people ever learning but never coming to the knowledge of the truth so a conference like this is an attempt to bring the experience of the kingdom in your life when moses met god he did not need to tell the people he met god there was an evidence on his face light light was the proof he met god so whoever could not meet God should just meet Moses to have the same experience. He came with light. So when you go back home after this service, it will be difficult for you to forget. You may not remember the scriptures, but you will never forget the experience. The Liberty Church where God gave me liberty how could you forget <laughs> hallelujah the next time you are bringing someone to church the depth of persuasion will be based on your testimony evangelism is easy when you have proofs when you have proofs now watch this please help pick someone's barrel I may require speed in my life but if I do not understand the requisite spiritual principle ordained by God there is a mystery that controls speed if you do not have it you can be born again filled with the Holy Spirit tongue talking sincere but that experience will never be captured in you are we together now but then at conferences like this you will learn there is an exact body of truth that controls this outcome your finances are going down and you're saying lord there's got to be a way you are right there is but it is not a way that you just learn intellectually alone the root of life is more than physical it spans to the realm of the spirit you must sustain an intelligence to draw reality from the realm of the spirit and now this man is sincere but everybody hates you bad things wait for you to come before they happen now there is an understanding that sponsors a climate that can change everything around your life please believe me there is a grace that controls influence just because you have something to say does not mean people will listen to you no it takes more than oratory it takes more than eloquence there is a hear ye him anointing if your business does not have it it will not rise believe me 
Many people with great information, great ideas, products that can go around Europe. But the grace is not there. The intelligence is there. The diligence is there. But they are not the only keys. I will give you the keys of the kingdom. The kingdom of God is akin, is, is likened to a house with many rooms. In every house there is a living room. Maybe multiple living rooms. There is a kitchen. There is the restroom. If you are hungry, you don't need the living room. You need to have the key to the kitchen. If you want to ease yourself, you will need the key to the conveniences. You are sleepy, you don't need a kitchen. You need the bedroom. So if you only have the key to the kitchen, when you are sleepy, you are in trouble. That key may not profit you. So he gave us keys. When you stand before a closed door, you should know what key opens it. When you stand before delay, you should know what key. Are we together? Now, that is authority. That is dominion. When we say men are graced, this is what we mean. By the sacrifice of alignment, by the sacrifice of learning the ways of God, they have been heavy on the strength. Okay, well, you don't hold my hands, you say, but then hold whatever you can. I'm not afraid. Come on, hold anything. Now, watch this. Now, when you say a man is heavy and anointed, it is because he is carrying a, a luggage of mysteries. When he stands before delay, there is a mystery that, answer, that answers it. When he stands before spiritual retrogression, he has learned a mystery of sustainable fire. Fire that does not go down. So after 10 years in ministry, that person remains standing. By what mystery does he continue? He said, by my God, I can leap over a wall. Daniel 11 and verse 32, it says, But the people that do know their God, they shall be strong, capacity, and they shall do exploits. You can be a man of God, for instance, maybe scattered across the crowd, a pastor somewhere. You can be sincere, called by God. But you will find out that there are no testimonies in your life and ministry. You know why? Because the anointing is like currency. Just because you have um, um, 50 pounds, you cannot buy a car with 50 pounds. But it is money. So you will need multiples of that to the level that can purchase that reality. Everything is bought in the realm of the spirit. You must be rich unto God to sustain that spiritual currency. Challenges are not generic. They are relative to the grace that confronts them. Are we together? So, follow me, guys. This is someone walking. You are carrying graces, possibilities. You come to a door that has been closed for many years. And suddenly you walk through it as though it was not locked. Because something you know. I'm showing you what you are becoming through this conference. This is what is happening to you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Believe me, this is no entertainment. It's a revelation of what is happening to you. Did the Bible not say, but we all with faces unveiled. It says, as we behold him as in a mirror, we are changed like a snake molting please sit thank you thank you so prayer is one of the mysteries can i share with you one more our time is gone so we just deal with one more blessed be the name of the lord <sighs> all right thank you <laughs> blessed be the name of the Lord the second mystery that I want to teach you very quickly is called the ministry of men write it down I want to show you the principles by which the saints reign prayer is powerful 
but I need to show you that men are very important in the equation uh, as far as the victory and the lifting of men is concerned. Luke chapter 2, please, and verse 52. If it's projected, I want us to read it. The Bible says, and Jesus increased. Jesus, your model, Jesus increased in wisdom. Help me, London. And stature and favor with God and it's interesting that Jesus saw the value of man. You know, we live in a world where in an attempt to show the all-surpassing power of God, we ignore men. It doesn't matter. Once God is for you, that's all. You are right, but in this context, you are wrong. The Bible says the heaven of heavens. Are we students of scripture? The heaven of heavens belong to the Lord. It says, but the earth has he given to the sons of men. That means that between the level, standing between the level you are and the level you need to be, a man must show up in your life. The word of God kept hovering around the heavens, unable to come to the earth until a man, woman now, Mary donated her womb to allow the word to become flesh. The body of Jesus is hanging on that cross and no angel could bring it down except a man who asked for permission called Joseph of Arimathea and said, grant me access to bring that body down. Let me tell you, when you ignore men, you will pay the price with your lifetime. In this kingdom, who hates you does not matter. But who likes you matters. A king hates a woman and she stops being queen immediately. Then he sees this young girl called Hadassah from Shushan and suddenly she becomes queen. This is the world of men. Find a way to convince yourself. The Bible says when it has to do with living in the cosmos, be wise as serpents. That means a serpent in scripture is not a good reptile. But as far as dominion in the cosmos is concerned, it says borrow an intelligence from the operation of the serpent. You will need it for dominion. Hallelujah. There are times where you do not have access to the gates of destiny. But you will need someone who is already at the gate to speak for you and if the person at the gate cannot speak for you you will remain oh joseph although an interpreter of dreams you will remain in the dungeon until the king sends for you and when there is no wine presser you may interpret dreams but you will live in the prison i show you the mysteries of the kingdom All blessings come from God through men to men. Write it down. It looks like it came from God directly. But I show you a mystery. Your lifting will come from God through men to men. It's true that God wanted me to bless you. But without a man, your pastor, the angel over this house and his wife, literally... Listen, please do not ignore men. Men are very important. Men can help men to become like God. It's true. Watch this. Saul, pastor. God rejects Saul as king. David is in the wilderness having visions of the throne. And yet he does not leave the wilderness because one man, not an angel, one man called prophet Samuel refused to go and call him. A man's destiny is tied down. Although God had rejected Saul, but God could not move with David because one man. And you think God would bypass him and say, I am God. David, 
I'm God. Let's go. He said he had to come to Samuel to say, Samuel, how long will you weep? Seeing that I've rejected Saul as king, you are delaying someone's destiny. Carry the horn to the house of Jesse. Listen, the person to lift you in London is already here. Hold on. Listen, if you do not discern men, the psalmist said, what is man? I would paraphrase it as what is in man. Oh God, what did you hide in a man that men are not seeing? God hides his anointing in men. God hides his possibilities in men. Listen to me. It is true that God called you to a healing ministry, but that grace is hidden in a man. And if you ignore that man, you may not step into that ministry. It is true that God told you this year he would lift you, but that word is in a man. This is not human worship. No. He uses men to lift men. You must understand the ministry of men, dear brothers and sisters. Satan knows this. He does not look for animals. He does not look for trees. He looks for men. The moment he heard that the seed of the woman will bruise the head of the serpent, he started searching for every man. The Lord confused him by that statement because women do not carry seeds. They only receive seeds. Are we together? Men are very important. Their endorsements can change your life. Most of the prayer we are praying, the answer is already in the hand of a man. It is within the power of certain gatekeepers. Please believe me. Somebody in this city has the power to see that this week you have a job. It's, it's not just in heaven. Listen, I'm telling you this. The property you seek is not going to come from another planet. It's in someone's account now. You see the power of the Holy Ghost touching people. It's not like it is now God wanted to touch them. Why does he start? Why didn't he touch them while you were singing your praise and worship? He was still here. Man. That means when you are ignoring a man, you are ignoring more than a body. You are ignoring your tomorrow. You are ignoring your next level. Listen very carefully. If I pray, Lord, lift me. The moment a man starts coming, the son, the son, forget about the persona, forget about the physical carriage, the son in the spirit. Could this be the answer to my prayer? Do you not know that when God answers prayer, he sends men? Men are proof that he heard you. Listen, the real proof of favor is not money. The real proof of favor is men. If all you have is money, you are not very rich. Relationships are advantageous connections. You must understand the ministry of men. Life can be hard when you do not have men. In fact, the Bible says it is in the multitude of men that is the king's honor. A king's honor is not measured by the treasure in his palace. The proof of favor is the loyalty of men. Hallelujah. Watch this. The cosmos requires the ministry of men. I have, can I use, is it alright if I use some money? No. I have, this is, this is 60 pounds. This man is praying, Lord change my life and his answer is in my pocket. Watch this. And while he's praying, he's going to be having visions. I have done it. That's how God speaks. Yes, and he's right because he has done it. But if you do not understand the mystery that is responsible for your delivery, you will keep having dreams and yet keep suffering. Keep having dreams. At a point, the devil will interface those dreams and say, God is lying to you. He is not lying. I'm showing you the mystery that is responsible for manifestation of spiritual realities. The ministry of man. Let me tell you, if God says yes, 
and a man says no it only remains yes in the realm of the spirit in this realm it will be no So when you want to rise, it is not important to have favor with God alone. You must have favor with men. If you have favor with God alone, you will have encounters. You can even go to heaven. You can have strange experiences. But believe me, you will be broke. You will suffer. Things will go bad to the point that you will not love that God again so you need favor jesus you think that jesus if he did not have favor with men he would ask someone to go and untie another man's donkey he said if they ask you say the master hath need of it favor london is a good land but your portion will only come when the grace that connects men to men is upon you believe me there is a grace just because you move around the length and breadth of this beautiful region it does not mean you will be lifted it does not mean you will be blessed are we together now Mordecai remained at the gate even though he was helping the king because there was no man in the palace to speak for him the man in the palace hated him and the Jews and the man kept suffering but one day my God one day the king could not sleep. That's God's part now. And the chronicles were open, the Bible says. But a man, he sent and said, who is there? And a man came and said, what shall be done to this man? God lifts men through men. Please listen to me. It is true. And my, my assignment, I know that we may not have all the time. But my assignment, by the grace of God, is to release a grace on you listen the grace that will compel men listen my dear people of God listen to me let me tell you this life is hard when no man shows up for you watch this the prophet speaks and says by this time tomorrow and yet nothing happened but four lepers the spirit of god comes upon four men and they say look why sit we here and die let us go men as soon as they began to move god multiplied them and their coming was like chariots of horses that means the grace that connects you to men is the grace that shifts you to a new level. Believe me when I tell you who likes you matters. It does. It does. It does. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Two keys very quickly and then we pray to activate the ministry of men in your life. Because it will not just happen. No helper of your destiny comes by default. No. Number one. The first key that activates the ministry of men in your life is honor. Honor. Honor is the discerning. Honor is the celebrating. Honor is the rewarding, if need be, of men for their uniqueness the fortitude to discern the fortitude to celebrate the fortitude to if need be reward this gentleman is playing the keyboard if i cannot play it like him i must discern i must celebrate that is honor honor is the key that opens up the treasures locked up within men every door closes because of dishonor without exception dishonor to god dishonor to men dishonor to principles if a door opened yesterday and is now closed let me tell you what closed it it's not just spirits the spirits were authorized by your dishonor every door 
apostle yesterday this man loved me so much and would help me and open doors for me in london but right now it looks as if the man does not even want to see me i tell you what happened dishonor dishonor you must learn to honor people when i met your precious man of god i honored him with all my heart and i still do and his wife for all of you who are gathered here in as much as i'm ministering to you i still honor you i honor you it's one thing to be called it's another thing to be anointed but it's another thing again for a generation to think you are that valuable and then to come and take the risk to listen to you and to open up their hearts to the grace upon your life that is honor yes thank you could it be that this may be why many of us have not been promoted honor the day you walk to your boss and say sir I came into London without a father or a mother when you saw me you saw my tomorrow I'm not in your office to seek for promotion I'm in your office with this token to tell you I celebrate you thank you for seeing my future for believing in me for investing in me that's all I came to say thank you you see this virtue is scarce that's why few people rise there are many of you here your loved ones scattered across this region and scattered across the regions of the world the ability to discern yes mother may not be educated yes mother may not even be able to speak english but mother carries a strange grace everything she told you happened why have you ignored her you can a simple phone call mother i just want you to know that i am grateful you told me that i would come to london and i know you never went to school but your word i respect god in god's investment upon your life listen do you know your miracle keeps passing you every day but dishonor closes the doors to their anointings it is possible and i say this respectfully you can be in this church for instance and i don't mean to insult your pedigree believe me i love you and i honor you with all my heart but if you see your man of god and his wife just as leaders they are just leaders over me congratulations you will get leadership but you may never receive the grace upon their lives Elijah told Elisha if you can see me was he not looking at him if you can discern what I represent if you know men only by the flesh you know for those of you who did I shared my story um, coming I was I've been very very busy I just had to come in I came in this morning and then I'm back again for another conference uh, my schedules are quite uh, busy quite honestly and as at yesterday night it was almost like i was i was not going to make it we had a conversation with pastor and um, i i left my luggage i came without that's why you see me looking funky and you see but behind listen your wife may be your miracle if you can see if all she is to you is your wife you will get a good meal you will get love but there may be a grace upon her the day you see her as touching that grace she can pray for you and your heavens will be open this is the thing about men that men do not know when I say men I regardless of gender the power of God is coming on you you will never be the same never be the same listen to me the person seated next to you may be an orchestration by god because the individual may carry the grace for speed just because you came to church it's not only the pastor or the man of god that has that grace they can say turn to your neighbor and say god bless you and you may resent the person because it does not carry a persona that is attractive and lose your miracle i show you the mystery that enthrones men it is not enough to know god you must also know men 
as far as dominion in the cosmos is concerned please listen to what i tell you i'm sharing with you a powerful secret my life is changed because i honor god and i honor men i honor your nation i honor your leaders i honor your parliament i honor the leaders political spiritual i honor them i will never stand in your nation and in your church to do anything at all that does not um, represent the counsel of god no i come with a heart of honor and when you come with honor the gates open it is a law i'm not only preaching to you i honor you your pastor we had a little conversation with him and my god i i am touched by the depth of the love and the passion that this man of god and i believe his wife have for you is more than leadership believe me do you know let me tell you this one of the biggest secrets to the grace and the glory of god and many of you have listened to my teachings you don't even know what made you addicted to them there is a grace watch this listen to me ladies and gentlemen this man standing before you is a lover of god and a lover of men my name means the way to love it is not only god i love i love men i really do so it is easy for the anointing it is easy to be touched with the feelings of people's infirmity i love people i will never look down on people i love people sincerely it doesn't matter what you have it doesn't matter what you do not have the love of God so the power of God God can invest his grace and glory because he knows you will not take people for granted you can pray you can fast but if you do not believe in the ministry of men you may never rise you need to meet God and you need to meet men to be enthroned are we blessed these are mysteries of the kingdom i have met men and i encountered anointings i met men and i encountered wisdom i met men i encountered insight i met men and they opened up their scars of decades and i learned in one day a man's pain of over a lifetime who have you ignored who have you ignored to prove you love God? It's imbalance. You must straighten it. It is important to love God and love men. There are men whose words are like the word of God. If they open their mouth, your destiny must open. Have you honored them enough? Are you getting blessed? Honor. The second key that activates the ministry of men and I will talk more on that tomorrow's session. Please do your best to not miss it. If you have to register, register. Whatever you have to do, just find out the details and make sure. Okay, whatever you have to do, just find out all of the details and make sure you are around. But listen to me. The ministry of the prophetic was given as a gift that connects possibilities to those who need them. The realm of the spirit carries is like how many of you um some of you here are into the media and many of you here know a lot about movies and acting isn't it now when you watch the raw videos there are lots of mistakes that happen is that true the 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 movie director the video editors right and the producers they come together to edit the scenes this is what prophecy does your life is like a page with many possibilities the prophetic edits out everything that should not be and then it can shift like playing a chess something that should have happened in your tomorrow but because a spirit of delay was on you prophecy can shift it and make it happen this week this is truth The prophetic is powerful the prophetic does not only reveal it creates that means it makes something that has no business happening to happen hallelujah 
grace who is grace grace come now let me just i'm prophesying to her but I, I want to you see this is revelation this is the revelatory dimension of prophecy i don't know have I, i've never seen this lady i don't know her anywhere but the spirit of the lord tells me grace and this is grace out it's, and it's not just of course grace is a general name you you understand most people bear grace but believe me this is not just calling out names by probability no 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 now this is revelation I can call her now and tell her and give her details. Here's another one coming. You see that? I can bless them. Now, the purpose of the revelatory dimension of prophecy, number one, is to strengthen your faith. It reveals to you that God knows so much about you so that you can now receive what would be said. Are we together now? But the most superior dimension of the prophetic is the creative dimension. You see, for instance, help them. Please help them. Hold this, my dear. Hold this, my dear. Now watch this. I'm giving them. I'm giving them some 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 um, uh, pounds. They are lifting it up. Now watch this. Assuming you came with this and you hid it, and I didn't know, and I say you are holding twenty pounds. That's revelation to encourage her. Are we together now? But when I look at you and say, in the name of Jesus, I speak over your week. Find favor. That means the creative dimension of prophecy will start looking for physical actors that must make that word come to pass. That means, listen, when the word comes, it starts moving all over London, finding this vessel is unwilling, it will leave. It must find enough vessels to act out that word until the word of God does not fail. So I can look at your business and say in the name of Jesus, let it rise. I'm not just telling you, let no. That statement will start searching for why your business has refused to rise and it will insist until it is corrected. Yeah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So I called Grace. What do you do, my dear? Okay. I want to pray for you. The month of April is a month of breakthrough for you. <laughs> Amen. What, what, what is April to you? What is April? April is a powerful month for me. It's your birthday? Yes, 5th of April. I said the month of April, you see. So, this is revelation. Are you seeing now? But whether or not I know her name, I can say in the name of Jesus, I'm prophesying to you that April opens up. You see that now? And that's the end of it. And her destiny just opens up. Listen, this is not some human bragging. I hope you understand my motive. I'm not, this is, this is not some, I know that here and there we find people who, listen, God has sent us to not only minister, but to correct imbalances, to bring the body of Christ to the coordinates of balance. So just because here and there, there are imbalances in these things does not mean that you just close your heart. The prophetic is a powerful advantage to believers. When the prophetic is used within the coordinates of scripture it produces wonders in the lives of people hallelujah my dear i use this as a seed to you step into a realm of favor in the name of jesus christ god bless you thank you Majesty. that in a moment we are going to pray hallelujah God bless you. In the name of Jesus, I speak over her life. Is someone ready to pray? Please rise up on your feet. Our time is gone. We're going to pray. You are here working miracles. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, turning lives around. I worship you. I worship you. Waymaker, say, miracle walk, from this key, light in the darkness. That is who you are. 
way maker say One more time. You are here. You are here. I worship you. I worship you. You are here. You are here. Turning lives around. about to pray for you now you reign you ancient Zion's king Kadosh Kadosh you were mighty on your throne you reign you ancient Zion's king Kadosh hallelujah now i want to pray please help me with this just a few minutes i want to declare by the power of the holy spirit listen the grace that is coming upon you now is a strange grace that will draw the ministry of men to your life we are empowered by the graces upon us listen it says thou anointest my head with oil my cup runneth over I know what is on your cup by looking at what is on your head. There is a grace that will draw possibilities to you. Right now, at the count of three, I'm stretching my hands. From the front to the back, all of the overflows and all those who are watching, bring them out. That anointing is coming on you now. In the name of Jesus, take that grace. Take that grace. Take that grace. From the front to the back. In the name of Jesus, I release you to the ministry of men. I release you by the power of the Holy Ghost. By the power of the Holy Ghost, I bring you the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Take that grace. You will never be the same. Never be the same. Never be the same. In the name of Jesus. I'm still praying. Now listen. Please don't miss the miracle service. But I'm seeing chains. Chains that are breaking from hands. Right now. Please bring them out. In the name of Jesus. I declare by the spirit of God. Listen. I'm going to pray for you and if God be God every chain that has held you down ah. atmosphere shift now change be broke break now Holy Spirit come down please help them please help them whether you are an usher or not, help them so they don't enjoy themselves. Say atmosphere, say atmosphere, ship now. Abarota shalanda siata. Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can I prophesy to you, ma'am? Please look at me. I'm seeing an anointing on you. A very great anointing. One, the grace of an intercessor. 
I'm seeing that grace coming on you. Number two, the Lord is saying, I'm bringing restoration to you. In the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands and I prophesy. In the name that is above all names, let there be restoration right now. Please bring them out. We're praying. You will never be the same. Please, whether or not you are an usher, just make sure, be your brother's keeper. Let no one enjoy himself. We're just two, three minutes and we're done. This gentleman on suit, careful, careful, don't. What do you do? You are a man of God. Does, there's no mic here. Oh. Yes, sir. Where? In Peterborough, sir. In Peterborough. Your church? No, sir. Please help us with the Salabrandis Kaboshialaka Egretusias Kabarush Nantas Kate Shalato Zaziata Hapa Gretosia Seketebala. Stand up, my friend. Come. It's time for your life to change. I release you. Step into a new dimension of grace. Never be the same in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ, I stretch my hands towards all of you. Carry grace now. Carry grace now. New dimensions, new levels in the spirit. In the mighty name of Jesus. Overflow. Overflow. Stretch your hands. In the name of Jesus. All those watching online and the overflow. Please, you don't have to come out. In the name of Jesus, I declare, let the power of the Holy Ghost turn your life now fresh hunger for spiritual things new dimension in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus hallelujah now please listen please accept you are called out you can go back to your seat God is going to touch you anyway well please don't miss tomorrow I want to share with you a mystery tomorrow and then I will prophesy the, the two lift gates of this nation must be open for your destiny. Yeah. Hallelujah. I want to pray for you. I don't know what has destroyed your spiritual hunger. Your hunger for the things of God. Your hunger for the word. Your hunger for prayer. But I stretch my hands in the name of Jesus, the son of the living God. Let the grace for intimacy with the Holy Ghost. May that grace come upon you right now. In the name of Jesus, hunger for prayer, hunger for fasting. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah, hallelujah. North London, North London, who is from there? Hold on, please. North London. Madam, where are you from? Yes. Uh, no, 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 no. I mean here. North London, come. You're a Nigerian, but you what? Okay, you live in UK. Hold my hands. Do you believe if I pray for you, God will turn things around? What do you do, ma? You walk, uh, what am I seeing you do it? Um, please don't be offended. Trash. Trash. I work in a hospital. Hospital. Oh, you, a lab. Yeah, lab. That's what, okay, I, I'm going to pray for you. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, I lay my hands and I declare by the power of the Holy Spirit, new dimension. Amen. Help her, help her. New dimension. In the name of Jesus. Now, please listen. If you are in business here, lift your hands. It's time to shift you to a new level by the Spirit. Father, I pray. You honor my words when I pray. I declare by the Spirit of grace, standing in faith with your pastor, the angel and the prophet over this house, I decree and declare, step into a new dimension. The Lord is restoring hunger for spiritual things this is what the lord is telling me some of you 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 were not like this you started with god with prayer with fasting with fire but something has eaten up your appetite like the hair of samson i command restoration 
in the name of Jesus a hunger for the things of God hallelujah now listen please listen we're wrapping up I want to pray for you in the name of Jesus every challenge you left at home to come here please believe please believe I stand by the rod of a higher priesthood in the name of Jesus who is the son of the living God I decree and declare that between now and tomorrow strange testimonies I release it by the power of the Holy Ghost that we will take strange testimonies here tomorrow go and meet prepared blessings Go and meet strange miracles. Hear me? I'm speaking to you. People who had forgotten you for many years in this city and around the world. I compel remembrance. I open the book of remembrance in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And finally, I pray for you. Please listen. The Spirit of God is telling me that he's bringing the miracle of documents, papers. This is happening to many people, like your paper. I don't know whether that means your paper for residency or something like that. In the name of Jesus, I don't care what the limitations are. I veto it by the power of prophecy. In the name of Jesus Christ, may the Lord my God honor this word over your life. In the name of Jesus wave your hands give Jesus praise give Jesus praise as you return back to your seat rejoicing give Jesus praise give Jesus praise give Jesus praise give Jesus praise